Hello guys, I'm Sonic the Hedgehog, and I'm Shadow the Hedgehog, and today, we got ourselves a very special guest. He's gonna be with us through all the parts. You might know him because, well, technically, he's our brother. And, you probably should know who it is, it's Silver. Hey guys, I'm so excited to be reacting to the natural phenomenon with you guys. Yeah, it's an honor. So just like Shadows, just like Silver told us, he's gonna be wrapped into it with us to the natural phenomenon. Now, Silver, what wanted, what make made you want to react to this with us? Well, seeing that you guys react to the weather phenomenon, and I wasn't there, even though I watched the real version myself by clicking on the link of one of your videos to the video. It was on the weather video, the weather phenomenon. It was pretty cool. Yeah. I guess it was. So, anyways, without any more further delays, let's press the start button. Master Hand? Sure. Nature has helped produce some stunning wonders huh. around the world. Huh. And every year, various human yep. activities and natural phenomena cause environmental disasters huh? and substantial economic losses throughout the Death? world. Death? You serious? The dark side, oh, man. something fascinating about the power of nature hmm. and it's impact. Impact? Don't expect to find the very popular Aurora Borealis or Fire Rainbows listed here. Darn! This I love those. This presents some of the most amazing natural phenomena, ranging from common ones to ones that are less known to the public. Less known? Yeah, I like the Aurora Borealis and Fire Rainbows too. But what about the anti crepuscular rays? Yeah, what kind of word was that? You. Hair ice. Hmm. Hair ice, also known as ice wool, is a type of ice that forms on dead wood and takes the shape of fine, silky hair. <sighs> it's somewhat uncommon and has been reported mostly at latitudes between 45 and 55 degrees north in broadleaf forests. Ow. They can maintain their shape for hours, sometimes days. This long lifetime indicates that something is preventing the small ice crystals from recrystallizing into larger ones. Since recrystallization <laughs> normally occurs very quickly at temperatures near zero degrees Celsius, the hairs appear to root at the mouth of wood rays, and their thickness is similar to the diameter of the wood ray channel. <laughs> a piece of wood that produces hair ice once may continue to produce it over several years. <laughs> Researchers have said the reason why it took almost 100 years to confirm this yeah. was because hair ice is a somewhat rare and fleeting phenomenon. That would be true. Hair ice grows mostly during the night and melts again when the sun rises. Yeah. It is invisible in the snow yeah. and inconspicuous. Cold frost. Inconspicuous and cold frost. Yep. 39 team. Yep. Frost flowers. Sweet. Frost flowers are ice crystals commonly found growing on young sea ice and thin lake ice in cold, calm conditions. Hmm. The ice crystals are similar to hoar frost. Wow. Are commonly seen to grow in patches around 3 to 4 centimeters in diameter. Hmm. Frost flowers grow on new sea ice. Yep. When the cold, moist air above becomes saturated, frost forms on imperfections on the icy surface. Imperfections? Frost on these imperfections seeds flowers, which rise as they wick moisture from the frozen surface, capturing salt and marine bacteria as they grow. Huh. Frost flowers bloom in the Southern Ocean and around Antarctica as well. But little is known about the physical, chemical, or biological nature of frost flowers at either pole. Scientists have learned to grow frost flowers in a freezer lab at the University of Washington to learn more about how these stunning structures form and interact with the environment. In general, frost flowers only form in relatively windless conditions. 38? Sweet. Penitentes. Huh. Penitentes are beautifully sculpted snow formations found at high altitudes. Huh. They take the form of tall, thin blades of hardened snow or ice, what? closely spaced with their sharp curves oriented towards the general direction of the sun. Sweet. These frozen pinnacles grow all over glaciated and snow-covered areas in the dry Andes. Dry Andes? Above 4,000 meters or 13,120 feet. Huh. They range in size from a few centimeters to over 5 meters or 16 feet tall. They form when the sun's rays turn snow directly into water vapor without melting at first. Yep. A process called sublimation. Sublimation? An initially smooth surface later develops depressions as some regions randomly sublimate faster than others. 
The curvatures yep. then concentrate on sunlight and speed up sublimation in the depressions, Sweet. leaving the higher points behind as forests of towering spikes. Ouch! That would hurt if you fell. Oh, sorry guys if you hear what's in the background, and don't worry about the reflection on the screen. Snow rollers. Huh. Snow rollers are formed when a thick layer of snow falls on top of a layer of ice. Oh! If the temperature and the wind speed are right, chunks of snow can break loose and start rolling. <laughs> tumbleweeds. As they're blown along the ground like wintry tumbleweeds, <laughs> they yeah. pick up additional snow mm. along the way. Huh. The inner layers are often weaker and less compact, allowing them to be blown away easily by the wind. What? Leaving a large, naturally formed snow dome. Naturally formed? Because of the precise temperature and wind speeds required to create this effect, snow rollers are a rare sight but have made headlines with their appearances in parts of North America and the UK. United Kingdom? Unlike snowballs made by people, snow rollers are typically cylindrical in shape. Sweet. And are often hollow since the inner layers, which are the first layers to form, are weak and thin compared to the outer layers and can be easily blown away, hmm. leaving what looks like a donut or a Swiss roll. A Swiss roll? What? Dang, man. 36. Red tides. What? Red tides are a phenomenon caused by large algal blooms when colonies of algae reproduce so numerously that they discolor coastal Ew. waters. Dang. They are also known to deplete oxygen in the waters and or release harmful toxins that may cause Stop drinking that water. as well as other animals. That's bad for you. Red tide is a global phenomenon. You can't hear us. However, since the 1980s, harmful red tide events have become more usual and widespread. While many people call these blooms red tides, scientists prefer the term harmful algal blooms. That doesn't even make sense. They have been reported in every U.S. coastal state. I believe you. And their occurrence may be on the rise. Wow. Red tides are of national concern huh. because they affect not only the health of people and marine ecosystems, but also the health of local and regional economies. A small percentage of algae, however, produce powerful toxins that can kill fish, shellfish, mammals and birds and may directly or indirectly cause illness in people indirectly when masses of algae die and decompose the process can ruin the habitat causing the water to become so low in oxygen that animals will have to leave the area but that thing can't fly it's gonna be there on its own yeah unless the plane comes of course yeah 35 striped icebergs antarctica these strangely clothed icebergs are formed when large blocks of ice break off from a glacier's ice shelf and float into open waters. Hmm. Because this ice is formed from seawater that contains organic matter and minerals, it washes a variety of colour and texturing into the iceberg. As the bergs become fragmented and sculpted by the wind and waves, the different coloured layers can develop striking patterns. Striped icebergs come in a variety of colours, including brown, black, yellow and blue. The different colours appear due to different reasons. Blue stripes are the most common and they appear when crevices are filled with water and freeze so fast that no bubbles are formed. None? Green presents itself because no. the water that freezes is extremely rich in algae. Algae? Brown, yellow and even black stripes are caused by sediments picked up along the way when the ice sheet was sliding downhill. <clears throat> Striped icebergs are not exactly rare, but quite uncommon. So they're not rare, but they're uncommon. That's why I deserve to be on the list. Indeed. Ice fumarole, Arctic. What? A normal fumarole is a vent that protrudes from the ground, allowing steam from volcanoes to escape out into the open. An ice fumarole is so cold that steam particles freeze upon contact with the outside air. Hundreds of icy towers are created by the natural contrasting hot and cold environment of Antarctica. As the heat from volcanoes melts the snow above, creating a deep cave, the rising steam instantly freezes as it meets the sub-zero temperatures. As the steam mm. continues to climb and freeze at the top, the spiky towers continue to grow. Whoa. Some of these icy stacks stand up to 60 feet high. Many ice fumaroles form around Mount Erebus. What the? Number 33. We're getting there. We're stopping at 30. Frozen methane bubbles. Hmm. A bizarre yet beautiful phenomenon occurs each winter in many Canadian lakes. Oh. And dangerous methane gas bubbles mm. create an artistic design frozen ice. Huh. The methane bubbles depicted in the photographs have generated a lot of buzz, buzz? particularly on social media. Oh, social media, Many Twitter, people have never Facebook, seen the phenomenon and Google, and are absolutely marveled at the beauty of them and wonder what they really are. We do want to know. 
What happens is that dead organic matter falls into the water and sinks to the bottom, where bacteria consumes it, and huh. creates a methane gas in the form of bubbles that rise to the surface. For real? When lakes are free of ice, yeah? the bubbles merely pop at the surface and the gas dissolves into the atmosphere. Oh man. But when the lakes are freezing cold, the bubbles become frozen and trapped under the surface. Sweet. The bubbles come in a variety of shapes and sizes, and some appear to be trapped in dozens of different layers of ice as they attempt to migrate upward. The bubbles can be dangerous if they are popped and ignited with a source of fire. What? But they are otherwise generally safe. So unless they're popped with a source of fire, they're, they're safe. Yeah, what he said. Brinicle. Brinicle. Brinicles are created under sea ice Whoa. when cold saline water is introduced to an area of ocean water. What? At the time of its creation, a brinicle resembles a pipe of ice reaching down from the underside of a layer of sea ice. Are you serious? As the sea water freezes, it pushes out impurities, including salt. This makes the water surrounding the pipe more saline and more dense. Dense? As such, it starts to sink. Oh, man! As the dense water flows down, Look at that. some of it freezes uh -oh. and creates the finger-like shape that's characteristic of the brinicle. A finger! At first, a oh, brinicle man. is very fragile. Uh -oh. Its walls are thin, and it's largely the constant flow of cold Look at all those starfish. They're going to get frozen. Here's its melt. Oh, it man. With the contact with less cold surrounding water. The scientific studies of brinicles are still in their early stages, but as new and incredible things are discovered every year, possibilities are absolutely endless yeah we apologize if you hear any sound in the background or a reflection on the computer screen rainbow eucalyptus trees eucalyptus native to the tropical regions of new britain new guinea saddam sulawesi and mindanao mindanao the rainbow eucalyptus is an extremely large broad-leaved evergreen tree it is the only eucalyptus species indigenous to the northern hemisphere. Northern hemisphere? It grows lightning quick. So here? It's able to double its size every year before reaching a trunk diameter of 6 feet. Ow. And soaring to heights above 200 feet. 200 feet? In the U.S., rainbow eucalyptus grows in the frost-free climates found in Hawaii and the southern portions of California, Texas, and Florida. Florida? The most outstanding feature of a rainbow eucalyptus tree is its bark. The bark? The trees shed patches of bark at different times throughout the year, Ow. revealing a bright green layer. The inner bark then darkens and matures into shades of blue, orange, and maroon. Unfortunately, it cannot survive hot and dry weather what? or frosty conditions. Dang. It can only be grown in specific regions near the equator that will sustain this type of tree. Okay. It's commonly planted in parks and gardens in countries that can grow it. So only certain places can grow it. I guess so. Alright team, well, that was part one. If you enjoyed that one, give uh, this video a like, comment, and subscribe. Yeah, a like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys... Oh wait, wait, before we go, we want to tell you guys that, well, Sonic.exe actually reacted to this video himself. Anyways, yeah, Sonic the XC wrapped it to this too, and he had five parts. And just like in the weather phenomenon where we both have four parts apiece, we're gonna have five parts as well. So we stopped that third like Sonic.exe, and we're gonna have to get more research to see where Sonic.exe stopped that on part two. Then we'll be ready to make part two. So see you in part two, team. Yeah, bye bye.